We live on the cutting edge of physics, material science, engineering, and nanotechnology. Because at Lockheed Martin, we're engineering a better tomorrow. Oh my gosh, I am so excited. Have you guys been having fun today? Yes? Did any of you get to check out the NASA scientist before me? She's incredible, yes? Woo, yes, Jessica, we love her. Thank you guys so much for coming out here. I am super excited, and thank you, Charles, for that fantastic introduction. Like he said, my name is Dr. Kate Bieberdorf. I'm a professor of chemistry at the University of Texas at Austin. Most of my students call me Dr. B, but before I get started, are there any Longhorn fans in the house? One, yes, thank you, I love you, fantastic. Well, hopefully after today, we'll get maybe two or three people to like the University of Texas. So yesterday was my cold show. So I did a bunch of things with cryogenics, liquid nitrogen, and then I stuck a little bit of electricity in the center. But today, today is my actually my favorite show. This is my fire show. Does anybody like fire here? That's it, like seven of you, come on. Do we like fire here? I am so excited, I'm so excited, but because today is a fire show, we need to make sure everybody is staying seated, especially here in the front row. So can I have your word that you'll stay seated? Yeah. Perfect, perfect, thank you so much. Except for, of course, those few people that I need for volunteers. So do we have some people here that will help me today? Okay, good, okay, good, wonderful, wonderful. So let's go ahead and get started. This is my fire show or a combustion show. So if you ever hear the word combustion, I hope you think, boom, big explosion and fire. So let's really quickly just talk about the science behind fire so I can get into the fun stuff. So in order to have a fire, you need a source of fuel and then you need one thing. What is that other thing you need? Oxygen, beautiful. So you have a source of fuel, you treat it with oxygen and then you make two things. One, you exhale, what's that? Carbon dioxide, beautiful, and the other one you drink, that's called water. So you have a source of fuel, treat it with oxygen, you form carbon dioxide and water. We're gonna do one kind of slight variation on that a little bit later when I start to blow up my balloons. But we're gonna get started, are we ready? Yes? All right, so the first thing we need to do is make sure we're properly, properly equipped in order to have a fire show. So I need three pieces of safety equipment. The very first one I have are these things. What are these called? Goggles, goggles. Why does someone wear goggles? What do they protect? Your eyes, exactly. Okay, so we have our goggles to protect our eyes. Then I need something else. There are these blue things over here. What are these? Gloves. Why do we wear gloves? What do they protect? Your hands, fantastic. Now we're gonna wear three different types of gloves today because we have three different types of experiments. I'm gonna wear these blue latex gloves when I touch everything, so I'm gonna wear them to protect myself from my knees, from the floor, and then any chemicals that I actually touch. We also have cryogenic gloves that are really thick and protect us against thermal energy, so I'm going to wear those when I do my big finale. And then I also have these hot gloves or work gloves, or it really just depends on what type of scientist you're talking to, but these bad boys, and I'm gonna have somebody wear these when they play with my blowtorch. Yes? All right. Okay, so goggles protect our eyes, gloves protect our hands, and then we have this thing. What is this called? A lab coat. First, you are smart, girl. I love you. Yeah, fantastic. Brilliant, girl. Okay, so lab coat or a lab jacket. Either terms work. Technically, you could wear a lab apron, but like I said, this is my fire show, so I want to make sure my neck, chest, and arms are protected. Now, tricky question here. This lab coat is flame retardant. Hands up if you know what that means. Yes, wonderful. Did you say it's resistant to flame, hopefully, but not fireproof? There's a very big distinction between the two, and let's talk about it really quickly. If a fire burst out right here, I could rip my lab jacket off, throw it over the fire, smother it, and the fire would go out because my lab coat is so thick that oxygen cannot pass through it. But if this building caught on fire and I put my lab coat in and ran into the building, would that be a good idea? No, that'd be a terrible idea. So my lab coat is resistant to flame but not fireproof. Do we see the difference? Now let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is talk about different sources of fuel. So I have two different sources of fuel here. One is flour, one is cornstarch. So let's start with flour. Now this is a solid source of fuel. And so solids don't have that much kinetic energy. They're kind of lethargic. They're your lazy friend. They sit on the couch. They're kind of like this, OK? So let's look at our first one, flour. And this is a blowtorch. <laughs> here we go. What do you think? Boo! Boo, right? Hold on. <laughs> so flour, good or bad source of fuel? 
Bad, terrible, terrible source of fuel. So let's try something else, cornstarch. Mmm, cornstarch, yummy. Do not do this at home. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> oh, that's so disgusting. You ever done that? No? Should we do it again, though? Yeah, I think so. All right, I'm going to go this way this time. And this time I want you thinking, what is the difference between flour and cornstarch? Why is cornstarch a much better source of fuel than flour? Should I do it bigger this time? I'll try. Cornstarch is disgusting, y'all. Okay, let's see. All right, mm, breakfast, that's delicious, okay. So we started off with flour. Flour was definitely a bad source of fuel. How would we describe cornstarch, good or bad? Good, definitely good. Now cornstarch has significantly more carbon than flour does, and so that's why it's a much better source of fuel. So now what I wanna do is transition to a liquid source of fuel. So flour source of fuel, or it's flour, <laughs> a solid source of fuel has just a small amount of kinetic energy. It doesn't move very fast, but a liquid has a little bit more. So if a solid is like this, the liquid's kinda like this, right? It's dancing around a little bit. So I need two people who wanna help me with my liquid source of fuel. Right here in the blue shirt, yes, Fantastic, and then also in the blue shirt. Is that a lion shirt? Oh my gosh, I'm from Michigan. I love you, come on up here. Fantastic, now, I have two rules. If you are going to be my volunteer, you must wear goggles and you must wear gloves. If you take either of them off, I will ask you to sit down immediately. Do y'all understand? Oh, let's try that again. Do y'all understand? Beautiful, come on over here, guys. Please put on a pair of gloves and a pair of goggles, okay, while I get this next one set up. So we're transitioning away from the solid source of fuel and we're gonna use a liquid source of fuel with my cannons. You probably call them water jugs, I call them cannons. I think they're fantastic. Yep, take your time guys, we're not in any rush, don't you worry. So these are three big jugs, and then I also have three different sources of fuel. Now all three of these are different versions of an alcohol. So I have methanol, methanol has one carbon, ethanol, ethanol has two carbons, adults, that's probably what you, last night, okay? Then over here, propanol is three carbons, okay? And what we're gonna do is test the liquid source of fuel, but then I'm gonna try to prove to you that the more carbon you have, the better the source of fuel. How are we doing, guys? Getting ready? Okay, beautiful. Since you were done first, I'm gonna have you come all the way over here on the end for me, please. And I'm gonna put my blowtorch back here so nothing scary is gonna happen until we bring that over. Are you ready? Yeah. You ready? Awesome. Come on, Detroit, come over here. You, no, you stay, you stay there, you're here, okay. So what we're gonna do, and just follow directions, okay? Open up your little bottle. You're gonna dump the liquid into the big bottle and then your palm goes on top. I don't care about the little bottle at all. Just dump the liquid in and then cover it for me, please. Perfect, just like that, nice job. And then over here, put your hand on the top of it, please. Put your hand on the top of it, please. Perfect, nice job. All right, so now we have our liquid inside of our big container. So we're gonna prime our container, and so this is the fun part. Dominant hand on top. I'm right-handed, so I have my right hand on top. Are you guys righties? Yes, yeah, so right-handed, perfect. So we're gonna turn it from the side, grab it from the bottom and pick it up. Beautiful, now step back just a little bit. Step back, give yourself some space. Now, like I said, we're gonna prime our container. So you're gonna coat the inside like this. Big swooshes, big swooshes, big movements, big movements, big movements, big movements, there we go, fantastic. So now in Austin, we have this fantastic museum called The Thinkery. If you are ever down there, please go check it out. It's a children's museum and it's amazing. And I went there for an event, it was 21 and up, and it was the very, very last show of the night. And I invited a gentleman up there, and let's just say he was having a good time, okay? So he gets up here and he goes like this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Best fire we have ever had, so I need you guys to be crazy, okay? Three huge swooches, here we go. One, two, three. Three rotations, one, two, three. Perfect, most important part, come over the table. Over the table, you're gonna invert it upside down, rotate, your palm will get wet, totally normal. Rotate, rotate, rotate. Once your palm is wet, perfect, turn it back around, put it down. Nice job, good job, and then put your palm on top. Put your palm on top, perfect, nice job. Okay, so let's slide back down to our original position, fantastic. Now, most important part, I want you to turn this handle so it faces the back. Fantastic, now, Detroit, can you please put your left hand on mine? Good, okay. We're gonna slide you down here. We're gonna slide you down here. Keep your hand over it as much as you can, okay? Now, you're gonna stay calm and you're gonna stay right here, yes? 
Yes, okay. We're going to slide you down like this. You are the most calm person in this room, yes? Yes, no, not loud, don't worry. But there is fire. Okay, so now I'm going to go one, two, three, go. This hand stays. You do not move this hand at all. This hand's going to move, okay? So you're just going to go like this. That's it, okay? One, two, three, just like that. Got it? Now in science, when you then light something on fire, do you stick your face over the vessel? Absolutely not. So just make sure you lean back, okay? You ready? You ready? Stay right there. Here we go, guys. This is methanol, one carbon. One, two, three, and go. Beautiful. Stay right there. It's still going. I don't know if you can see it. I can see it. You probably can see it. So methanol, oh, it's still going. It's still going. I can hear it. Here, I'll get the mic as close as I can. Okay, it's fire. That's as close as I'm getting. Okay, there we go. Okay, <laughs> one carbon, one carbon there. Are you ready? Now we're going to do two carbons. This time, what I'm going to have you do is you're just going to go run that way. Okay, ready? One, wait for me. One, two, three, go, go, go. Ooh, ooh. That was two carbons, two carbons. All right, dude, ready? You're just running. You're running. One, two, three, go, go, go. Give it up for volunteers. <laughs> nice job, guys. Gloves off, just make a pile right here, and then goggles right there. Fantastic. Oh, did you like that one? Yes. So hopefully now you see that the more kinetic energy you have, the bigger the fire you have. But what's really cool is hopefully you now believe me with what we told you earlier. So cornstarch has more car carbon than flour. Here we saw three different sources, one carbon, two carbons, three carbons. And so the more carbons you have, the bigger the flame you have. So here's my question. How many carbons would you want to use, one, two, or three, if you wanted to light a candle? One. How many carbons would you want to use if you wanted to maybe have a huge fire right here? <laughs> Three, right? As many carbons as you possibly can. The more carbon you have, the bigger the fire. Did you like that one? Yes. One more time. Give it up for our brave volunteers. All right. So now, what we just did there is we shot the kinetic energy up, okay? We shot it up into the air. But what I'm curious about is what happens if I took this vessel and went like this? You wanna try it? I need two very brave volunteers. Very, very brave. Let's see here, let's see here, let's see here. Right there in the middle, green shirt. Yes, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Right there in the very corner with the blue shirt. Come on up here, fantastic. All of you, come on up, come on up. Now again, remember, you must have goggles and you must have gloves. Come on, all the way up here, guys. Oh, and I love that you're putting your hair up. You're a perfect scientist already, fantastic. Gloves here, gloves here. You're probably both mediums or larges, and then make sure you grab your goggles. Again, we're not in any rush, guys, so take your time. So now, would it be safe to use that vessel inside for a bottle rocket? No, absolutely not. So what we do here is we're going to use little bottles like this. So I have a one liter and a two liter, OK? And this looks actually more like a three liter. But what you can see is all I've done is cut a little bit of a hole right there in the top, OK? Just a tiny little hole. And then what we're going to do is test out our propulsion. So instead of using three carbons, because that would absolutely not be safe inside, we're just going to use one carbon and we're going to use methanol. Take your time, take your time, we're not in any rush. So what I have is this little squirt bottle here. I've already primed it with some methanol, and then let me move my blowtorch. So now, you are nice and tall, so I think you should have the big tall one, don't you think? And you can have this one here. So what we're going to do is you're going to turn it on the side. You're going to pick this up and go one, two, three. Three big swooshes, go for it, please. Oh, one, two, three. Perfect. Good job. Go ahead and put the cap on that for me. Now you do three. Yeah, do more. Do more. We want to do more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Okay, good. Now cover that for me, please. Now just like before, I need you to cover the hole in the very, very top. And do you remember what we did with the big ones? We need to prime our container again. So once it's all the way on, make sure it's all the way on, and then turn it on the side and shake, 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 shake. So what we're trying to do right now is encourage our methanol to go from the liquid state to the gaseous state. So we're trying to aerate it just a little bit. And so what we're going to do is instead of allowing for that thermal energy to go up, we're going to turn it on its side, and hopefully we can go this way. So you, sir, just be careful, okay? And you, sir, be careful as well. Are you ready? You ready? Okay, but really big. Three big ones. One, two, three, four, five. Go. Now side to side. Go! Yes, perfect. Good. Now you, I want you to go back here and stay calm. Okay, come on over here. We want the cannon to go that way or the rocket to go that way, so we're going to turn it just a little bit like this. Perfect. Now I'm going to have you come all the way over here. We're going to go like this, and then when I say one, two, three, go, you're just going to pick your hands up. You're not going to throw it in the audience. You're just going to pick your hands up and take a couple steps backwards. Got it? Stay here. Wait for me. Okay. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yes. Okay. One, two, three, go, go, go. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, that 
was cool. That was cool. Okay, let's do it with a bigger one. Let's do it with a bigger one. Give it a big shake. Give it a big shake. Big, 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 big. Perfect, perfect. Okay, turn on the side. Other way, other way, because we like those people over there. Fantastic. Nice job. And then we're going to pull it all the way over here. Again, just pick your hands up. Go this way, okay? Are you ready? Okay. Oh, okay. Are you nervous? I'm nervous. Okay. One, two, three. Go, go, go. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Give it up for our volunteers. Nice job. Nice job, guys. Nice job. Gloves off. Gloves off. Perfect. All right. So we tested a gas, excuse me, a gas. We started with a solid, then we went to a liquid. Now it's time to try a gaseous source of fuel. So I need one, two, three, four brave volunteers. Green shirt, green shirt. NASA, over here, over here. Right there, yes, you right there. Yes, you, come on up here. For this one, y'all, I need you just in goggles, just in goggles. And we have three pairs of goggles up here, so we're just getting a line and we're gonna rotate through. Yes, just goggles. You don't even need gloves for this one. Just goggles, yep. And then you, ma'am, you're probably gonna run out and let her get first, and you'll, yep, you'll put it on after, okay? All right, so here we go. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna have my balloons right here in the front. When you are the active person, you're gonna come over here and stand right here. Got it? You guys watching me? And then you're gonna have a long stick. Let me show you your stick. So what we have here is a very expensive stick with a candle taped to it. And what we're going to do is just tap our balloon. That's all we're going to do, OK? So you're going to come right up here for me, please. Stand right there. Hold my stick. Now what you're going to have is a nice long arm. Put a nice long arm, perfect. And then you're going to turn your body. Perfect, just like that. Now go ahead and bring it back to me. Perfect. All right, are you guys ready? So this first one here is hydrogen gas. So hydrogen has one proton, one neutron, and one electron. Now, this might be a little loud, so if you're sensitive to loud noises, go ahead and cover your ears. Ready? You have a nice long arm. Don't move your feet. There we go. Just tap the balloon for me, please. Nice. Oh, no. That's OK. That's OK. We'll just try again. Hold on. Let's see here. What do I have here? Yeah, let's try it again. No worries, no worries. What happened there, guys, is the candle spot actually poked it instead of the flame hitting it. Can you reach that tall one, do you think? Let's see. OK. All right, you got this. You got this. Yes! There we go. There we go. That's better, right? Yeah, OK, come over here for me, please. All right, now you're number two. You're number two. Come on over here, please. Now this one, guys, this one is helium. Helium has two protons, two neutrons, two electrons. Are you ready? You got this. You can do this. Nice long arm. I'm right here with you the whole time, OK? Now here's helium. Go ahead. OK, that was supposed to happen, though, OK? <laughs> and so helium is an inert gas. So is every gaseous source of fuel a good source of fuel? No, not at all. So helium, there's a reason we use helium in our birthday balloons, but not hydrogen. But I personally think blowing up hydrogen is really fun, so I have two more just for you guys. Can you give your goggles to her for me, please? Let's just do two more just for fun. Come on over here, NASA, please. Are you ready? OK, hold her here. Hold her here. Wait, wait, don't do it while my head's right there. OK, nice little tap. Perfect, good job. Nice job. Nice job. Are you ready? All right. Come on over here. Good, good. You've got this. I love your hair, by the way. Fantastic. OK, wait for me to get my head away. Nice long arm. Wait, 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 wait. Tap. There you go. You want to the fire. There you go. Nice. Good job. <laughs> Good job. Give it up for volunteers. Nice job, guys. Nice job. Good job. Go ahead and take a seat. Yep. Either way. Either way. All right. So what do you think, guys? Which has the most kinetic energy, a solid, a liquid, or a gas? A gas. Absolutely. Now, question is, what kind of gas would you want for your birthday balloons? Hydrogen or helium? Hydrogen, obviously, right? Absolutely. All right, so now I'm going to change gears just a little bit. I've done something to show you how we can use fire to do something and make a loud noise. But now what I want to do is show you a really little demo to show you where we can actually use a combustion reaction to do something with color. So I need one volunteer who wants to play with my blowtorch. I saw you. Yes, great shirt. You jumped right up when I said blowtorch. I like that. Come on over here. <laughs> All right, so for this one, now what we're going to do is show you just a little bit about how they make fireworks. Now, I actually went for my pyrotechnics training about three weeks ago. Are you ready? 
no, you're not ready. Put some goggles on. You're not ready. <laughs> so then what we're going to do is I'm going to have you put these work gloves on because I want to make sure your hands are nice and protected. So what I have here, these are actually really, really simple. You can do one of these at home, and I'll show you which one in just a second. But I have four different containers. Each of these containers are filled with a water solution. That is it. That's the only liquid in there. But I've also spiked them with an inorganic salt. So I have strontium chloride, potassium chloride, sodium chloride, and copper chloride. And we're going to pull about four of these really, really big tongue dispensers or popsicle sticks out because we want to set this on fire as much as possible. Now, I really hope you guys can see this one. It's a little small, but I think we've got this. Are you ready? All right, so here's what you're going to do. You're going to hold my blowtorch. Now, do you turn it and put it at my face? Do you turn it and put it at your face? No, absolutely not. You're going to point it this way, hold it from the bottom here, bottom here, and I'm going to kind of walk you through this. Got it? Okay, come real close to me. Perfect. The first one is strontium. Guess what color strontium is? It's a beautiful red color. And so whenever you burn strontium metal, you always see that really, really beautiful red color, which I love. Now the second one, this one is actually my favorite. It's really hard to see, so hopefully in the back you guys can see this one. Can you see it? It's like a beautiful light pink purple color. Very, very simple, but I think it's just absolutely gorgeous. Now the next one is a UT favorite, and you'll see why. It's a sodium chloride or table salt. Ooh. So that's an orange color. So sodium always burns orange, always, always, always. And then the last one, if we have any Harry Potter fans in the house, this is Voldemort's favorite. We got some copper. Isn't that pretty? Do you like that one? What was your favorite? One, two, three, or four? Four. So that's copper. Beautiful. Give it up for Von Deer! Nice job. Put your gloves on. All right. So. What we just saw there is the unique properties of metals. And so they have quantized energy states. So whenever we excite the electrons, they're able to jump up. For strontium, the energy gap is really, really small. So you can only see just a tiny little red color. For copper, the gap is much, much bigger. So when that electron falls down, it's like screaming off energy. And that scream is that green color. Did you like that one? Yes. Let's see if I can kind of take it up a notch. So remember when we did the balloons? And then we did this. Now what I'm going to do is combine the two demos. So we're going to take the hydrogen balloons, which I've pre-spiked with each of these metals. So hopefully we can see a little firework. So for this, I need one, two, three, four, five volunteers. All right, let's see here. Let's see here. What do we got? Striped shirt here. Pink shirt here. Striped shirt here. Let's see here. Let's see here. Let's see here. Pink shirt here. And then all the way, standing up, dad is holding her. You Good job, dad. All right, come on up here. Great job, guys. Get in line. We have three pairs of goggles, so we'll just go ahead and rotate through. Here you go. Beautiful. Careful. Take your time, guys. We're not in any rush. No worries. No worries. Safety is the most important thing. Beautiful, beautiful. So we're going to stand right in line just like that. You're going to stay right here. I'm going to call you up one by one. Everybody got it? Yeah. All right. Are you ready? Yeah, OK. All right, so this first one is strontium. So you saw strontium before. We're going to set it on fire. Are you ready? Come on over here. Let me move this out of the way. All right, I want you to stand right here. This time, nice long arm, and you're going to tap that balloon. Can you reach that? Is that too high for you? You can reach it. OK. I'm going to come behind you. Are you ready? Yeah. OK. Nice little tap right to the balloon. Beautiful. Beautiful. I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you. Beautiful. Nice. <laughs> Good job. Good job. Good. That was strontium. Let's do potassium. Who's next? Come on up here. Yes, please hand your goggles off. Thank you. Are you ready? This is potassium. This is my favorite. You got this. Beautiful, beautiful. So that had that little pink, purpley color. Now let's jump to sodium. Who's next? Who's next? You're next. Goggles on. Goggles on. There we go. Take a hand there. I'm going to come behind you. This one's sodium. Are you ready? I got you. Don't you worry. Okay, we're doing this together. We're doing it together. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Nice. Good job. Good job. You okay? You're okay? Good job. Good job. Are you ready? <sighs> okay. Hold on. All right. All right. We've got two more here. This one was the Harry Potter one. Are you ready? Yeah, you're ready. All right. This is my new best friend. This is what? An Evangelica, something like that. Evangelina. There we go. We got that name right. Are you ready? Okay. Here we go. Oh, I love your smile. Okay. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Good job. Good job. All right. I lied earlier. This is actually my favorite one. 
So I actually drive to a special store in Austin. It's a clown store to get my balloons because we want to make sure they're nice and classy and they work very well. So this one here is spiked with magnesium powder. So if you've ever seen a firework before, you've definitely seen magnesium burn. Are you ready? Okay, you're brave, right? All right, good. Now this one, I'm going to kind of put my body in front of you just to make sure we're nice and safe. Got it? But we're going to do it together. Would you mind switching hands for me, please? Thank you. Yeah, I know, right? That'd be bad. <laughs> Here we go. You can do this. You can do this. One, two, three. It's okay. Let go. Let go. Let go. <laughs> Give it up for volunteers! Nice job. Nice job, guys. Nice job. Beautiful, beautiful. So what we just saw there was hydrogen gas that we lit on fire. So hydrogen gas is a really good, clean source of fuel. Instead of something like our fossil fuels, coal and oil and our gas, natural gas, when we burn those, you release carbon dioxide and water. But hydrogen gas is very, very clean. So when you burn hydrogen gas, you actually just release water. So I personally believe it's the energy of the future. And I hope you guys too, especially you young kids, I really, really, really want you to develop a way for me to have a hydrogen tank just with me in my car at all times. But is that safe right now? No, super unsafe, super unsafe. So I'm going to change gears one more time, one more time. So this time, this time, what we're going to do is talk about a catalyst. Do you remember the helium balloon that popped and it was so boring? Do you remember that one? Yes? So sometimes things just don't light on fire. They're just not naturally combustible. So what you can do is add something to it to kind of make the reaction occur. So I personally studied catalysis when I was in graduate school. So I love, love, love catalysts. So I'm going to take just a quick right angle turn here. And I want two volunteers who want to help me with catalysis. All right, let's go back. You are jumping up and down. I can't deny you. Come on up here. Stay in there, right there. Yes, come on up here, please. Come on up. Come on up. All right, now. What we're going to do is test two different catalysts. Come on over here, goggles, and please put some gloves on for me, please. Yep, you're fine. No worries. We're not in any rush, guys. Goggles and some gloves. So what I have here are two different Erlenmeyers. We're going to do these one at a time. This first one, I'm going to use manganese trioxide. The second one, I'm going to use potassium iodide. So what we're going to do is test how to decompose H2O2. So once they're ready, I'm going to kind of give you a little example. Take your time, guys. We're not, I'm not trying to rush you. Take your time. Beautiful. So we've got hydrogen peroxide right here. At home, you probably have it in an amber bi vial because what happens with hydrogen peroxide is it naturally decomposes when it's exposed to light. But what we're going to do is try to speed that reaction up by adding our catalyst. Okay, who did I pick first? You? So you get to choose. Do you want to be a genie or an elephant? Good call. Okay, you, sir, go over there. <laughs> All right, come on over here. So we're going to take our time, okay, nice and slow. Open this up and dump it right in there. At home, you all use 5% peroxide. I like big reactions. I am from Texas. I like big reactions. And so what we do is we're going to use 35% peroxide. You did not spill a drop. You should absolutely be a chemist, okay? Yes, you should. Okay, now, what we're going to do, manganese trioxide. Here's the reaction right now. Boring, boring, boring. Manganese trioxide, not so boring. So I'm going to have a spatula. What I'm going to do is scoop it. The only reason I'm going to scoop it is because it's kind of expensive. It's not toxic or anything. You could totally do this on your own. So I'm going to scoop it for you. I'm going to hand you the spatula. What you're going to see is the manganese trioxide right here at the end. It's going to look like a, back, a black charcoal, kind of like a catalyst-y type thing. And you're going to just dump it right into the flask. Then you're going to put the spatula down, and you're going to run like the wind, OK? So it's dump, drop, run. Yes? Yes, yes OK. Are you ready? Now, personally, this is my favorite way to decompose hydrogen peroxide, but we're going to have to have a vote afterwards and tell me if you guys like this one or not. Go ahead and dump it right in. Beautiful. Just like that. Go ahead. Run. Take off. Perfect. Good. Good job. Just wait. Just wait. Ooh. Just wait. Oh, it's working. It's totally working. I love it. You did such a good job. Oh my god, that's awesome. Okay, so what we're seeing right now is our hydrogen peroxide is decomposing and we're releasing oxygen gas. Now, I think that's okay. I think that's kind of exciting, right? I'm curious, what would happen if we added just a tiny bit more? <laughs> what would happen if I dumped this entire bottle in there? The fire marshal would shut me down, so we're not doing that one. <laughs> and so what we're seeing right here is our hydrogen peroxide, H2O2. We added our catalyst, and we're releasing oxygen gas out the top. Now, if I was outside in Texas, I would 100% light that oxygen gas on fire. What would happen? Boom! Huge explosion! But again, not safe inside. So what we're seeing is what we affectionately call genie in a bottle. Um, I really like Halloween, though, so I pretend this is a ghost in a bottle around that time in October. Good job. Are you ready? Okay. It's kind of hot, so we're going to slide it right over here. So this one 
We need the bigger one. And we've got some peroxide, some dish soap, a little bit of potassium iodide, and then some food coloring. Are you ready? Go ahead and open this up, dump it right in there. Same thing, hydrogen peroxide, 35%. We're just gonna test a different catalyst, okay? Take your time, take your time, no rush. Beautiful, you also did not spill a drop, that's fantastic. Now I want you to open all this dish soap and dump it right in there. Now, we use Dawn dish soap, there's no chemical reason why we use Dawn dish soap. And they just save penguins, and penguins are my favorite animals in the entire world. So I make sure we always, always, always support Dawn. Yay Dawn, I don't know if you're here, but there is a penguin. So if anybody has a hookup with that penguin, I gotta meet it, I gotta meet it. Okay, good, you ready? Beautiful. So now what I want to do is add some food coloring. Your options are blue, yellow, green, red, or orangey type thing. Red, good call, good call. Here you go. Dump as much in as you want there. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, I like, I like your style. Beautiful. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to swoosh it. Swoosh is the technical term, obviously. So we're swooshing here. And what we're trying to do is get a homogeneous mixture. So something that looks, in, for the most part, uniform. So now what we're going to do is you're going to add the potassium iodide, OK? Hold on, hold on. I like your energy. <laughs> hold on, though. So what we're going to do, you're going to open this. You're going to dump it in. If I at any point say run or tackle you to the side, you run. Just don't even worry about this. Got it? OK. Whew, are you ready? You're fast, right? Yeah, you're fast. OK. Whew, whew. I'll take the cap. And then you want to just go dump it in. Beautiful. Faster, faster, faster. Now go, get out of here, get out of here, get out of here. <laughs> Give it up for our volunteers! Oh man, that is incredible. This one is called elephant's toothpaste. So what's happening is we're releasing that oxygen gas, but it's trapped inside of the bubbles. So you remember with the genie where the gas went up? This time we actually just trapped the bubbles or trapped the oxygen inside the bubbles and we released it up. Yes, we could still set it on fire, but again, would that be safe? No. One more time, guys. Please give it up for our amazing volunteers. <laughs> nice job, guys. Goggles off, gloves off. Fantastic. All right. I think it is time for our grand finale. Are you ready? So, the first thing I have to do is a request from the audience. Somebody asked me yesterday, is there any chance you could please do that thundercloud again? And I was like, yeah, you don't have to convince me to do that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna let that fill up with liquid nitrogen so we can do that one more time. That's just a throwback to what we did yesterday. But in the meantime, what I'm gonna do is set up my favorite demonstration with fire. And so what we've got here, ignore that, what we've got here are four balloons that I've tied together into what I refer to as a balloon bouquet. However, if somebody delivered that to me in my office, I would not be um, very, very happy like you do when you usually get a bouquet in your office. This is a little bit more explosive, a little bit more dangerous. And so what I'm gonna do is try to combine my first demo and my last demo. So do you remember the first one? where we breathe fire. So the goal is to breathe fire into this. Ooh, anybody? No? You guys don't get it, you're not impressed. Okay, that's okay. I'll take it. So I'm gonna use the cornstarch instead of the flour. And my goal is to kind of go just like this, because I know a lot of you like to take pictures, so that's gonna be the angle. Let me check on my nitrogen. How are we doing over here? Oh, oh it's almost ready. All right, guys, this is just a shout out to the awesome kids who've requested this yesterday. Y'all were amazing. Brent and, uh, Brent and Andrew, thank you so much for coming up and talking to me. I absolutely want to honor your request because this is one of my favorites. So what we're going to do here, bucket of liquid nitrogen. And then over here, we have our bucket of hot water. So what I'm going to do, again, this has nothing to do with fire. It's just really fun. I'm gonna take my bucket of hot water and I'm gonna add it to my bucket of liquid nitrogen. Here we go. Okay, guys, Woo, here we go. One, two, three! Woo oh, come on! And so, what we just saw there is we had the liquid nitrogen that's in here, and the thermal energy was thrown to my bucket. Thermal energy went from the hot water to the liquid nitrogen, and boom, we're releasing a cloud here of nitrogen gas. Very, very fun. Again, nothing to do with fire. 
Okay, now and this is the one that scares me. It's the only demo that scares me, but it's my favorite one for fire. That's really my favorite one. Okay, is everybody calm? Everybody ready? And just you guys right here at the front, I can't have you moving, got it? No, that's why you can stay there. I just don't want you to stand up. All right, so now sometimes I get all of them, sometimes I get one of them. No matter what happens, y'all cheer me on, okay? Okay, I can do this. I can do this. Here we go. 